At the gallop! Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier, the saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire, and the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Lieutenant Seibert's reporting is ordered, Captain. Oh, yes, Mr. Seibert. I have a special detail for you. Yes, sir? We've received a report there's a band of Brule Sioux camped on the North Fork near White Butte. I want you to ride out and see what they're up to. Yes, sir. They're too close to the Bozeman Trail. Better take a scout with you. I suggest Dan Tolliver. I prefer Pete Hazen, sir. Oh? Why? I don't care for Tolliver. He's the best scout on the post. He's a squaw man. You've still got a lot to learn about the West, Mr. Seibert's. I suggest you might find old Dan Tolliver a very valuable teacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, son. I come out of these parts when I was a lot younger than you. Mighty lot younger. Nothing on my cheek but peach fuzz. Must have been rugged in those days. Rugged? Why, son, there weren't a town or village tricks St. Joe on the Missouri and Monterey on the Pacific. Man had room to breathe. Now look at it. Immigrants pushing west every year, filling the plains with dust and damnation. I can't say I blame the Indians for being a mite put out about it. I'd expect you to look at it their way. What are you signifying by that, son? Well, I understand you've been closer to the Indians than some of us. <laughs> well... So I have, in a manner of speaking, lived amongst them off and on for many a year. Fine people, decent people. I saw how decent they were up on the Powder River. Man doesn't look very pretty after they've been decent to him. What part of the states you call home, son? Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Well, how'd you feel if all of a sudden a lot of people started crowding into your hometown, moving on to the streets you live in, moving right square into your house, maybe? What'd you do? Well, I don't know. And I know. You'd throw him out, that's what. Well, this whole prairie belongs to the Indian. Yes, sir, it's his home. And he feels about it just the same way as you do about your home. It isn't the same thing. Well, it might seem the same to an Indian. That's ridiculous. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait a minute. What is it? Indian. Where? Down there in that draw. Oh, yeah. Hey, his horse is bucking. Yeah. Look. Well, first time I ever know an Indian to get thrown off his horse. Let's go. Come on. Hey! Rattlesnake. He's going to strike. That's why our horse threw her. Well, that snake ain't going to be much use no more. Better get a tourniquet on that leg before the poison starts moving. Well, you could use your revolver, Lanyard. Oh, sure. Uh, tell her not to be afraid. Tell her we'll take care of her. I understand you. Oh, well. <laughs> it's got the blood stopped. Now... I'm going to have to cut your leg so I can suck out the poison. I'll try not to hurt you. She's fainted. 
It's just as well. I had to make sure to get all that poison out. That Indian blood taste any different from regular blood? What are you talking about? Blood's blood. That's what I've been talking about. Help me get her over to my horse. Where are you taking her? Back to the fort. Well, you think that's smart? We can't leave her out here. She needs a doctor's care. Well, we could try to find her people's camp. Then leave her with them to die of blood poisoning? She's only an Indian, son. All right, Tolliver, that's enough. Let's get our horses. It's a long ride back to the fort. What you've done may have serious consequences, Mr. Seibertz. What else could I do, sir? Do? Look, from the Indian's point of view, you've kidnapped one of their women. Well, I suggested we ought to find her village, Captain, but the lieutenant said bring her here. We can only hope they didn't see you. Well, that's doubtful. Her pony bolted, and when it gets back to camp without her, there'll be a devil to pay. She ain't no ordinary squaw. What do you mean? By the look of her clothes and the way she wears her hair, she could be the daughter of a chief. Lieutenant Seibertz, we're here to keep the peace, not to commit overt acts of hostility. It was only an act of simple Christian charity. Lieutenant, you'll form a detail at once and return that girl to her people. But, sir, the doctor says she's got to stay in bed for at least a couple of days. Corporal of the guard, sir. Well? Post number three reports a party of Indians riding toward the main gate. How many? Fifty or sixty of them, sir. What do you think, Dan? My guess is to come to parley. hope you're right. Let's see what they want. suppose that's the chief riding in alone. It's Spotted Tail. He's always been friendly. Well, he ain't dressed up friendly today, Captain. Every scalp he ever took dangling in his belt. Shall I fall in the company, Captain? Don't move, Sibert. Greetings, friend. The soldiers of the Great White Father are honored by the visit of the mighty Spotted Tail. The soldiers... Of a great white father, say one thing, do another. Say want peace, steal land, shoot buffalo, call it peace. Now steal Indian woman, steal daughter of Spud Tail. Your daughter was not stolen, Spotted Tail. She was hurt. This officer brought her here so the doctor could help her. Where is Awapa, my daughter? She is in the hospital. I'll take you to her. It's true, my father. White soldier, help me. Why? Why enemy of Indian... Save Indian life. We do not want to be your enemy, Spotted Tail. We want peace. I hear this many times before. I'm sorry, Captain, but you'll have to go now. Come, Spotted Tail. Ahuapa must rest. Not leave. Daughter belongs to her people. I take. But she can't be moved. I move. No, my father. I do... As white doctor say. You come to the lodge of your father. Captain, I can't be responsible. Spotted Tail, hear me. Ahuapa will live. She will be well in a few days. If you move her now, she may die. So medicine man make my daughter well. Spotted Tail, you can pitch your lodge outside the fort until Ahuapa is well again. You can see her every day. Spotted Tail, not agency Indian, is warrior. Must hunt. You can hunt around here. There's plenty of game. White soldier, keep daughter of Spotted Tail in prison. My father, wise chief. He know this no prison. Is hospital. These no enemy. They friend. Ahuapa here. Ahuapa. Stay here. Aye, then. Be it so. (laughs) 
Well, Mr. Sibitz, your little adventure didn't turn out so badly after all. No, sir. But I don't advocate rescuing Indian maidens in distress as a substitute for military duties. No, sir, only... Only what? Had the captain been in my place, I feel sure he would have done the same thing. Oh? Yes, sir. Well, maybe so. She's a spunky little baggage. You, uh... Going over to the quarters? Uh, as a matter of fact, sir, I thought maybe I'd drop in at the hospital here. I see. Well, good luck, Mr. Seibitz. Thank you, sir. Morning, doctor. Hmm? Oh, Lieutenant Seibitz. Uh, how's your patient this morning? Well, now, I have more than one, Lieutenant. How is she? Well, now, by a curious coincidence, she was inquiring about you this morning. About me? Yes. She asked me to send for you. Why? Now, why don't you ask her? She's quite well enough to talk to now. Thanks, Doctor. Morning, ma'am. Now is good. You feeling better? A pain all gone. That's fine. Ahoapa all life to lieutenant. Ahoapa belong lieutenant. I beg pardon? How else ahoapa show thanks? By getting well quickly. Is not enough. Uh, it's all the thanks I need. It's strange. What is strange, ahoapa? White man, Indian, both men, white men think different. That's because we've been taught differently. Ahoapa like way white man think. You teach Ahoapa think this way. <laughs> That's quite a large order. But you do. First you teach Ahoapa speak white man tongue. You speak English very well. Not good, Ahoapa, I think. Uh, you teach better. I'll be glad to try. Good. You begin now. Uh, I don't know where to begin. How does Lieutenant call himself? Me, Ahoapa. What Lieutenant? Oh, my name is Seibertz, Richard Seibertz. Richard. Good. See? Ahoapa learned first important English word. Mr. Seibertz? Sir? Mrs. Seibertz, I may be mistaken, but I don't believe I saw any change in the order of the day. I beg pardon, sir? Since when have sash and plume been indicated as proper dress for the officer in charge of guard mount? Oh, well, uh, it isn't, sir, but I thought it might be good for the morale. The morale of whom? Why, the men, sir, naturally. How's that, Lieutenant? Well, sir, it, it also occurred to me that it might make a good impression on the Indians around the post. They put a lot of stock in their own headdresses and ceremonial regalia. I thought it might be a good idea to show them what our dress uniform looks like. Lieutenant Seibertz, the only Indian who witnessed this guard mount was Ahuapa. I'd noticed that, sir. And had you noticed that each time you are the officer of the day, she is here on the parade ground to watch you change the guard? Well, sir, I guess she's interested in soldiers, sir. Soldiers? Or a certain soldier? I wouldn't know, sir. I believe you're off duty now. Yes, sir. Then, Lieutenant, I suggest you shouldn't keep the lady waiting. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It always makes me a little sad to see such a sunset. So beautiful. My people say they not wish to die. And each evening, great spirit must fight with it. 
until it died bloody death. And only when it scalped will night come. Warrior may sleep, gain strength to meet new day. My people say the sun is a handsome god who rides across the sky in a golden chariot, forever chasing the beautiful goddess who is the moon. And does he ever catch her? Never. A sad story. He should catch her. He can't. For he belongs to the day and she to the night. But if he did catch her, what would happen? Who knows? So great is their love, perhaps the heavens would burst into blinding flame, consuming everything. Oh, yes. But he would have caught her. Yes, he would have caught her. He gone now. Your handsome sun god. Gone over edge of world. Great spirit has killed him. Oh, no. He's not dead. Look over in the east. The moon goddess comes following after. Richard? Yes? I am that moon goddess. You are that god of sun. And I follow you always. And never, never may I catch you. No. No, I won't run away over the edge of the world like the sun. I'll stay here with you. Always. Always. You're not afraid of blinding flame that consume everything? I'm not afraid. Then I'm not afraid. Good evening, Lieutenant Seibert. Hello, Piney. You want a little rye? No, thanks. I'm looking for Captain Quince. Has he been in? No, I haven't seen him all evening. Well, well, well. Hello there, son. Hello, Dan. How about you and me having a little drink? No, thanks. Oh, come on now. That ain't very sociable. Seems how you and me got a lot in common. What do you mean? Oh, you know what I mean. If you'll pardon me, Mr. Tolliver. Wait, what's your hurry, son? I'm sorry. Oh, now, wait now. Nothing like a pretty little squall to change a man's mind about Indians, is there, son? You filthy minded. Oh, now, now, son, now wait. There's no cause to get your dander up. I was just a. Eddie! Eddie! Now, what's this all about? Captain Quince, you ought to take better care of this young man of yours. He seems mighty touchy. Mr. Sabbath, you're aware of the regulations covering the conduct of officers in uniform? Yes, sir, only... You'll consider yourself confined to quarters until further notice. Yes, sir. Captain Quince reporting, sir. Oh, good morning, Lee. I hear you refereed a little scuffle over at the Sutler's last night. <clears throat> Why, uh, yes, sir. One of our officers fighting a civilian. Well, Major Daggett, as far as I can see, he was provoked. Did Dan Tolliver attack him? No, sir. Tolliver was taunting him about the Indian girl. Seibert's in love with her? Apparently. Well, his love affair will have to wait. We've got more important things to worry about. That's why I sent for you. Yes, sir. Just got a dispatch from Fort Kearney. Some idiot Kansas militia outfit attacked a Cheyenne village last week. But we have a treaty. We're at peace with the Cheyenne. Apparently it didn't mean a thing to those brave civilian soldiers. They attacked without warning or provocation. Massacred every man, woman, and child in the village. Come in. I beg pardon, sir. Yes, Sergeant, what is it? The Indians have pulled out. He was there last night, but this morning there ain't a single teepee down by the river. Just a couple of stray dogs. They got the news quicker than we did. They always do. A party of Cheyenne is killed and the Sioux take to the warpath. We may have a general uprising on our hands. 
Have your company ready to move out in half an hour, Captain. Yes, sir. It's not good for daughter of chief to be tied like prisoner. It is not good for daughter of chief to refuse to follow her people to war. We are now many marches from white man. Untie me now. I shall stay with my people. It is good. You will get well in your mind now. The white man medicine make your body well. But your mind sick. You will be well now. There is much good about white man. He killed our people. Not white man at Fort Laramie. It was others. And it was not our people who were killed. It was the Cheyenne. We at peace with white man at Fort Laramie. White man is white man. Indian is Indian. And soon white man will kill us all if we not make peace with him. Then we will die brave in battle, not drunk on reservation. You will. Warrior will. But what of women? What of me? For many moon, Dark Elk want you for his wife. Marry him and have many babies. I will remain with my people as long as I live. That I promise. But I will never marry Dark Elk or any other Indian. (laughs) Another glass of punch, Major? Captain Quinn? Thank you, Mrs. Davenport. On Christmas Eve, why not? Thank you. Well, Merry Christmas, Lee. Merry Christmas, Major. Hey, where's young Seibert? Thought the doctor was letting him out of the hospital at last. He'll be along presently. Major, I have a suggestion to make, if I may. Sure, go ahead, Lee. This has been a bad winter so far. It looks like it's going to be worse. The Indians are, well, they're bound to feel it. Game is scarce. They haven't the advantages of the treaty supplies we were furnishing them before they took the war path. What's your suggestion, Lee? Call them in for a peace parley as soon as the snows melt, say April 1st. Maybe we can end this useless bloodshed. Maybe, but I don't think they'll come. Why not? After that massacre in Kansas last summer, they won't forget. But I can't say as I blame them. Worth a try, isn't it, sir? Certainly, anything's worth a try. Good evening, sir. Evening. Oh, Lieutenant, how's the arm? Doctor says it's going to be all right, sir. Lucky you didn't lose it. You should have seen it, Major. Arrow cracked the bone, pinned his arm against his side. It's a miracle he's alive. I know. Those were Spotted Tails warriors, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Any idea who got you? Yes, sir. A warrior named Dark Elk. He was after my scalp. I shot him. That changed your opinion of Indians, Lieutenant? No, sir. They're a fine race of people, sir. Come in. Beg pardon, sir. Yes, Lieutenant. What is it? Party of Indians approaching the post, sir. War party? No, sir. Women and children along with the braves. Ah, maybe we'll have a peace parley after all. Let's go out and meet them. Oh, where's Captain Quince? Right outside, sir. Major, it's Spotted Tail. I see it is. Greeting, soldiers of the great white father. Greetings, brave Spotted Tail. I come in peace and in sorrow. What sorrows the mighty chief of the Sioux? My daughter, Awapa, has gone beyond the sunset to join the great spirit. She's dead? The soldiers of the great white father joined in the sorrow of Spotted Tail. 
The winter was long and cold. There was little to eat. A fever came to Awapa and would not leave her until at last she left me forever. But before she fell into long sleep, she asked two favors, one I can grant, the other I must ask of you. And what are those favors, Spotted Tail? She asked me to make peace with a white man. I have come to make peace. It is good, Spotted Tail. And what is the favor you must ask of me? Awapa, love white man. Awapa, say if she cannot be with white man in life, then she wish to be with him in death. Awapa, ask to be buried at Fort Laramie. It shall be done. Captain Quince? Yes, sir. Would you be good enough to assign a funeral detail? Full military honors. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Seibertz? Lieutenant Seibertz! Sir. Take charge of the detail. Yes, sir. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by William N. Robeson, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Jack Moyles, Lillian Bayef, Ralph Moody, John Daner, John Stevenson, and Don Diamond. Company tension. Dismiss. Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Each Monday through Friday evening, CBS Radio rings you in on the fabulous adventures of insurance investigator Johnny Dollar. Just by decoding the cryptic items in his expense account, you'll learn how a dime spent in a phone booth can lead to a scene of the wildest suspense. Then on to a sum spent for an airplane ticket, or an item for a new shoelace, and again you'll find yourself smack in the middle of a thrill-packed situation. Each new adventure moves the story forward to its dramatic payoff, when Johnny Dollar solves yet another case of arson, fraud, or murder. Every Monday through Friday night over most of these same stations, hear yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar.